His hey, hand. I volunteer you as we got it. We got this one. It's in the bag. This oh, one is a surefire winner. All right, tell me when. Tell me when. And go. We need this one. Okay. Uh, uh, Tortoise. Uh, Tortoise. Uh, Tortoise. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Jack in the box. Jack in the box. Uh, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Disney. Um, Sandstorm. Sandstorm. Come on, guys, this is a classic. I know you've seen it before. <laughs> Katie, Katie, I know you've seen this episode before because we watch The Boss on the Prairie every morning in my dorm room freshman year, so. <laughs> So, so Mary and Adam are supposed to get married, but Mary freaks out because they're both blind, and she's like, how am I going to deal with that? Am I right? <laughs> so, so, and then there's a sandstorm, and then this annoying blind girl, Susan, from their school, she, she goes out into the sandstorm, and Mary goes out alone and finds her. How did she find her? Yelling. Because, you know, hearing. Susan! I'm here! 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 So. So what's that? A bonnet. What's that? The wind. Why is there a fire? That's her skirt. Oh. So why didn't you just draw sand and storm? Sorry, I'm late. Sandstorm. Thank you. I wish you continued health, that you feel no pain, that the endless surgeries that you've had to endure are a thing of the past, and that you have emerged victorious from this battle. I wish you perseverance in the face of adversity, and that you will once again rise like the phoenix that you are, and that the wise people of Michigan will again vote you to be their representative in the U.S. Congress. I wish you only prosperity, the, the misfortunes of the past. That concussion she got in Dancing with the Stars and the balcony that fell on her in 2012 never follow you as you march on towards your future path. I wish that every moment with Timothy Busfield is as magical as your sweet 16 when you shared that first kiss with Almanzo. Although that, that was a little creepy because in real life he was like 25 and she was only 15. I know. What's up with that? I don't know. I don't know. Finally, Melissa Gilbert, our birthday wish to you and the same wish that we wish for every year. Please, please let there be a Little House on the Prairie reunion episode sometime before we die. And please get Melissa Sue Anderson and Matthew Laberto on board. We know you can do it. Amen. Amen. Okay, on to the next. Pamela, what do you think if maybe next year we actually try Ma's fried chicken? Cinnamon chicken's a classic. Hey, have you seen my backpack? Yeah, sorry, I put it in the back room along with your suitcase. Hey Mary, you remember my cousin Jason? He's here for the weekend. What's up? Oh, and be careful because there's an apple pie cooling on the windowsill. Why is it in the guest room? It's the only window without bars. Who's that? Nothing. Nobody. Why are you being weird? I'm not. It's a guy from OKQ, but he wants to get together tonight. 
Yes! You're actually doing it! Yes! Yes! No. Come on, no, go meet him! No, we are in the middle of a celebration. It's our tradition. The pie's gonna be cool in a half an hour, and you know I like to eat it fresh. It's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let him know. We'll get together another time. Okay, but actually I have a little surprise for you. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with current day Melissa or little house Melissa, but I decided to honor her journey and go with current day. She's beautiful. Oh, our little half pint is a full pint now. Getting candles. Bonnets. I'm going to a lightsaber battle in Washington Square Park. Don't wait up. Awesome. Bye, Jason. Have a great time. Freak. Happy birthday, Melissa Gilbert. Happy birthday, Melissa G. My name is Roy, I'm 6'2", I'm a jock, played pro ball in the 90s. I'm straight, I'm a man, but I love Little House on the Prairie. You think I would've gotten that support in the locker rooms if they had found out Pa broke his ribs? Or Little Carrie got stuck down in a well? Or Mary going blind? No. They would have compared it to the frickin' Waltons and had a field day. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. All right, now that's our trigger. Now, think about this. Perhaps right now there's somebody just like you, another guy in another locker room who feels the exact same way. Friends, if there's anything to take away from this today, remember, you are not alone. And if you don't believe that, you'll be going through life blind, like Mary. I used to pretend I hated it and only watched it because my sisters did. I didn't let on that it was my favorite hour of my day. Two words. Clown rape. One word. Sylvia. I've never trusted a blacksmith since then. Me sentía como una cruce entre Nelly y Pa. Salvaje, sin embargo, desafiante. Necesaria para soportar la ira de la señora Olsen. You know Ma's rusty chicken wire gangrene episode is haunted as a saw for life. If she had only washed it off. When you think back on it, I really Think back on an entire body of work which has lasted now for over 40 years. It's undeniable, undeniable that this was Jason Bateman's best work. And then they shot Bunny. Bunny the horse. I can't tell you, still, to this day, the emotional release I feel when I watch Laura push that monster, Nellie Olson, down the hill in that wheelchair. I mean, how could someone fake being paralyzed like that? It just, it just makes me so damn mad. Everything I am, I owe to Garvey and Hester Sue. Nellie, Nancy, Nellie, Nancy, I mean, how does one cope? She almost had to cut off her own leg, you guys. Why didn't she wash it off? Listen, guys, I'm no Doc Baker. I don't have a magical salve that will make the pain go away. So what can we do? We get up. We put one foot in front of the other, and we go out there and we celebrate each day. You celebrate every day like it's Christmas on Plum Creek, huh? Friends, I know that we all strive for the strength of Pa, but you know what? Sometimes it's okay to be Nelly. Say that with me. It's okay to be Nelly. It's okay to be Nelly. It's okay to be Nelly.
It's okay to be Nelly. It's okay to be Nelly. It's okay to be Nelly. It's okay to be Nelly. It's okay to be Nelly. Sorry, man. I, I thought there was basketball here tonight. Uh, no, it's a support group tonight. Um, Bonnet Heads Anonymous. What's that? It's a support group for men who love Little House on the Prairie. Are you serious? <laughs> Only in New York. My name is Matt. It's taken me my whole life to come out and say this. I don't know why I've been so ashamed or why I cared what other people thought. Maybe I thought that they'd see me as weak or a sissy. But what I have to say to all of them is that I learned strength from Pa. That a man can be strong in body and character, but still be man enough to cry, and play a musical instrument. Did that make Pa less of a man? Hell no. So tonight, I'm gonna be more like Pa. I'm gonna be strong, and I'm gonna stand up, and I'm gonna say, that I am a proud bonnet head. Yeah, you coming with us, man? Where are we going? Yo, we're gonna go run down a hill with a bandit. Yeah, well, you know, we might fall, but we gonna get back up, pull our pants up a little higher, and keep on going. Yeah, yeah. And towards the bottom of that hill, when that shit get real fast, we gonna put our arms out like an airplane, and we gonna jump. <laughs> we gonna fly. And you could own half my penny. Come on. We Why can't I find a guy who's into this? So he's in the lab or whatever, right? And the camera pans slightly out and we see the sirens flashing and like, he's done. They're coming for him, right? But he just stands there and he rests his hand on like this meth tank, I guess. And it slides off and there's this smear of blood. And it cuts to him just lying there as the camera pulls back and that song Baby Blue starts playing. Do you, do you know that song? It, my baby blue, you know that song? Yeah, it's amazing. Easily the best episode of television I've ever watched. I can't believe you haven't seen Breaking Bad. So, what do you like? Let me guess. Uh, you're a Stranger Things addict. What? 280s throwback. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I mean, Orange is the New Black is so obvious. It's a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. Never seen it. Really? What about Transparent? Jeffrey Tambor's amazing. Ugh, I'm so, I'm just so bad with keeping up with the new shows. You know, I don't watch that much TV. Come on, everybody watches TV. Here, paint me a picture, okay? You just came home from a long day of work, you got your jammies on, you got your feet up. What is Pamela binge watching? Come on. I promise I won't laugh. Your favorite TV show, go. Well, Little House, Little House on the Prairie. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just like, wasn't that show uh, like, uh, so my mom always wanted me to watch it instead of reruns of Three's Company before dinner. It's like Bonanza, right? Like Wild West, horses, um, right? Not, not exact. Well, okay, Michael Landon was technically... So, there I'm were horses. I'm sorry. No, God, no, no. Little House was about this family in a rural community. It's like the Waltons. No. 
no, 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 <laughs> not at all like the Waltons. Very, very different than the Waltons. <laughs> no, Little House um, had, they dealt with some pretty serious issues, you know, um, sometimes just basic human survival. Like the Waltons? No, no, not like, okay, first of all, let's just make one thing clear. Little House on the Prairie was not at all like the Waltons. Not at all, no. No, Little House on the Prairie was about a family, a community, and the, the love that they shared and the hardships that they endured. Clearly you have never seen an episode of it because if you did, you'd know that Little House on the Prairie was way deeper than the Waltons, way deeper, way deeper. So, you know what, let's even stop saying the Waltons because, because there's literally like not even a comparison between the two, so. Okay. No, not, not okay. Not okay, because they dealt with some really serious shit on that prairie. Some serious shit. Okay. No, no, no. Not, o not okay. Not okay. You don't even, because... <laughs> Racism. Racism. Several episodes on race, like the one where little Willits from Different Strokes, he runs away from home, and the Ingalls want to adopt him, but they can't because he's black. He's black. So, race relations. Oh, and, and what about uh, uh, drug addiction? You like drug addiction? You like drug addiction because apparently morphine was some crazy ass fucked up shit in the 1870s. You know, because, you know, one, Mary's piano teacher who came back from the Civil War and had post-traumatic stress disorder, and two, Albert, Albert, Albert was addicted and then he stole that shit from Dr. Baker and then he went through withdrawal and he vomited all over himself. He vomited. No, you think you think uh, John Boy ever vomited on himself? So, oh, and uh, what about Ma? What about Ma almost cutting off her own leg? You know, just one little scratch from a chicken wire and the next thing you know, she has some big ass knife over the fire and she is literally about to slice her leg off, so. What, you think, you think the Waltons pulled that kind of shit? No, 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 no. Blindness. Obesity, dying babies, little people, Jews. And if it is still unclear to you, I have one more thing to say. The two-parter episode where the Albert's girlfriend gets serial raped by a clown. Clown rape! I mean, for God's sake, do you hear me? And then she gets pregnant and she dies. She was only 14 years old. I mean, does this mean nothing to you? Does this mean nothing to everybody? Why is this so difficult to understand? Clown rape. You're waiting, Nias. I need help. And in, and out. And in, and out. We're holding this space together, and we're honoring. As your life coach, our hour together is devoted to your growth. We could have Skyped, but face-to-face -face is good too. And at this place, breakfast is $7.99 with free refills, so it's, it's a win-win for everyone, I think. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I don't think I'm that difficult of a person to get along with. I think I'm pretty easy to get along with. <laughs> but it's just like, no one gets it. It's like, it's like I'm on an island of idiots and I'm the sane one, but because I'm the sane one on an island of idiots, I'm considered the idiot and everyone else is the norm. I'm the idiot. I'm the idiot. Okay, <laughs> I, I feel that we're really focusing on your rage and feelings of isolation. But I, I, I want to move past that. I want to look at what's behind the anger. What I'm getting, basically from everything you've told me, is the only time you even feel connected to humanity is when you're watching this show of yours. 
you're not isolated then. You, you get a sense of community, a sense of family, a sense of being unconditionally loved. And these values are important to you. But your very basic needs have been created by these values that you learned a very long time ago. Essentially, the episodes of this show are in effect your childhood memories. But, but it's okay, nobody wants you to stop loving it. The question is, how do you get these needs met in your life for real? I don't know. Okay. As your life coach, I feel I need to challenge you right now with truth. This is a fictionalized TV show from the 1970s. I mean, if you loved Breaking Bad or Stranger Things or Star Wars even had a revival, if we're talking about transparent, that's, that's a current cultural phenomenon. It's a conversation starter. It's water cooler conversation. Little House on the Prairie? I don't know, maybe in France. But I'm not shutting you out. No one wants to shut you out. It's just people either have no idea what the heck you're talking about or they don't share this deeper understanding you have of the show. And I get it. I get it that that's frustrating. And that you feel like you're the only one who's in on the big secret. And the question is, are you getting more out of this show than you're getting out of your real life? What are you afraid of? What's at stake? What's at stake if you risk loving a real person? Look at me. What if he breaks my heart? What if, what if he leaves? And I'll still be alone. I'll just be alone and <laughs> destroyed. And what's at stake if you don't risk loving a real person? I'll die alone with a TV remote in my hand, watching actors who never knew who I was and who don't know me. Vulnerability is what makes us human, and not just a character in a TV show. I want to know, can you love someone who doesn't love Little House on the Prairie? Is loving this show a, a criteria for being with you? What if someone's great? What if they, they, they love you, they value you, they honor you, but they just don't have every single aspect of their lives completely identical to yours? Like Nellie and Percival. Okay, I just want to pause and honor what you just said. Pamela, you have everything you need to live a fulfilling life. Hi, I never do this, but I just wanted to say that we love you on Game of Thrones. I can't believe King Joffrey is right here. King Joffrey. <laughs> when you died, you I was like, Dinklage. Yeah. Lannister. Is your water okay? Yes. Winter's coming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. I get that all the time. Ladies night. So we can dance all night with hot guys and who cares? Come on, we are entering the number one relationship wasteland for single women kind.
So you don't like dancing, huh? <laughs> no, I'm I'm okay. Yeah. Girl, you gotta loosen up. Excuse me? Look, I'm not judging you. You know what I did before I had this job? I was a teacher. Everybody loved me. Bunch of small town kids in a cramped little schoolroom, but it wasn't me. So you know what I did? I hitched my wagon and I went to New York City. <laughs> you know what you need? What? Tequila. You go, girl. Sandstorm. From the party, right? Sandstorm. I knew it was you. Well, I just wanted to say hi. You should have said the best part. When Mary and Adam get married. They would have loved that. Nice to see you. 